Hello everyone. Today we have a very interesting topic that is assault that is defined under section 351 of the Indian Penal Code. As per section 351 of IPC, whoever makes any gesture or any preparation, this is the very important word, underline it, gesture or any preparation, intending or knowing it to be likely that such gesture or preparation will cause any person present to apprehend that he who makes that gesture or preparation is about to use criminal force. So second important term in this particular section is about to use criminal force to that other person is said to commit an assault. So we have a four five ingredients and that is section number one the person is making gesture or preparation he is having an intention to make that gesture or preparation and he is likely that such gesture or preparation uh, will cause any person the victim who is present over there and there is apprehension in the mind in the minds of the victim that who makes the gesture or preparation is about to use criminal force to the person concerned and therefore it is called an assault. Very interesting explanation has been added to this particular section that is mere words do not amount to an assault. So keep in mind mere words do not amount to an assault but the words which a person uses may give to his gesture or preparation such a meaning as may make those gesture or preparation amount to an assault. What does it mean? If someone is saying that I will slap you, it may or may not be an assault, but it will amount to an assault if it is accompanied with the gesture. If the words are accompanied with the gesture that he is showing his anger, that he will slap, slap another, then in such a situation, it shall amount to an assault under section 351 of Indian Penal Code. Now the question is what we call assault as the Indian Penal Code classified inflicting a bodily pain into three categories number one the assault number two the criminal force and number three the hurt as criminal force is more severe than the assault and less severe than hurt or you can say the criminal so, uh, the criminal force is having more criminality than assault and less criminality than the hurt so the first comes the assault then criminal force then the hurt for example spitting over the other when the person is preparing to spit over other then it is called an assault and when he spit over other then it is called the criminal force but if someone is touching another's body in the anger then it will be called as hurt because he causes a hurt to other person and therefore it is called the offense of hurt so it has certain increasing degree of criminality or if someone causes some bodily pain to other by touching his body then in such a situation it will be called as offense of hurt as defined in section 319 of the Indian Penal Code. So basically uh, it is a threat by one to inflict criminal force against other. So one person is giving threat to inflict criminal force against the other or causing some actual hurt 
is not necessary to constitute the offense of assault that we have understood that it is not a mandatory requirement that to cause actual force before the actual force that someone is making a preparation making a gesture of his body then uh, here itself it will constitute the offense of assault so what does it mean mere threat mere threat as we have understood under the explanation that mere threat mere words may constitute an assault if it is accompanied with the gesture uh, made by the person made by the accused himself or we can say to constitute an assault there must be some threatening physical act by which the offender intentionally causes another to apprehend that the criminal force is about to use this about to use is the very important word i told you that this about to use is very important you know, phrase so you must underline it again and again so if someone threatening that he is about to use physical act against the other and if his intention is clearly shown by his gesture then if the victims if the victim is apprehending that he is about to use criminal force against me then it will called as assault and it will constitute an offense under section 351 of the indian penal code so the gist of the offense lies in the effect which the threat creates in the minds of the victim so if in the minds of the victim if any threat has been created any apprehension of the has been created or apprehension of danger has been created then it will be called as the assault has been committed against other the question is what the prosecution has to prove before the court of law beyond all reasonable doubt so the prosecution has to prove first there is making of any gesture or preparation on the part of the accused in the presence of the victim the first and foremost things the prosecution has to prove that gesture or preparation has been made by the accused in the presence of the victim so the victim presence is must victim presence is required if the victim is absent then it may not amount to an offense of assault and it is a question of fact that whether uh, up to what extent that it will be called as the victim was present over there for example the victim was present at the 500 meter 200 meter or even 1 kilometer or 2 kilometer so it is a question of fact it would be decided by the court that whether he was present over there or not second what the prosecution has to prove the intention or knowledge as we already understood that the intention is something which available inside of human being and knowledge is something which is objective in nature and that can be verified by the external source of information so the prosecution has to prove either intention or knowledge that uh, that uh, likely there is likelihood that such gesture or preparation will cause the person apprehend that he is the person who is making the gesture or preparation is about to use criminal force so he has to make uh, he has to uh, the prosecution has to ensure that there was an intention there was knowledge that that he is about to use criminal force against other and there must be apprehension there must be an apprehension in the minds of the victim that he is about to use criminal force if there is no apprehension then again there cannot be an assault so uh, the person making the gesture it must be uh, accompanied with the, some bodily uh, expressions and it will cause an apprehension in the minds of the victim that he is about to use criminal force so all these things has to be proved by the prosecution beyond all reasonable doubt assault in english law uh, that means threat or violence exhibiting an intention to use criminal force so there is threat there is violence that has been exhibited by the accused and it is also clearly showing the intention of the accused that he is about to use criminal force and the present ability an intention to carry out the threat into execution the effect so 
mere saying that he is about to use criminal force is not sufficient rather there must be present ability that he can execute his threat that means he can convert his threat into criminal force then if there is an ability there is an intention there is a gesture or preparation then it will constitute an offense of assault so threat itself not constituting the offense of assault rather in all cases threat be the means to carry out into the effect so threat is mere means to carry out the assault into the effect uh, one term is used under uh, this particular section that is making any gesture or preparation what does it mean so apprehension of use of criminal force must be from the person making the gesture or preparation so the person who is giving the apprehension so gesture and preparation must be from the person or the accused person concerned but if suppose if it is arises from someone else some other person then it would not amount to an assault uh, under section 351 of the indian penal code for example someone pointing out a loaded gun over other then it will be amount to an assault on the part of the accused person who is pointing out the gun over other and if the someone is stand by who is merely uh, smiling it cannot constitute an assault on the part of other because he is not pointing out gun over other we can take another illustration uh, illustration number a of section 351 where it says a sex uh his feast at z intending or knowing it to be likely that he may thereby cause z to believe that a is about to strike z and therefore a has committed an assault so he is uh, shaking his feast and he is also making him believe that he is about to use criminal force uh, he is about to strike him and therefore it will constitute an assault under this section one of the important aspect of this particular section is intention and knowledge so that we have already uh, understood and we know that what we call intention and what we call knowledge so the gist of the offense is the intention or knowledge that the gesture or preparation made by the accused would cause apprehension in the minds of the victim so there is an intention or there is knowledge there is intention on the part of the accused that he is about to use criminal force against other or there is objective element that is knowledge that anyone or prudent man can say that he is about to use criminal force against other because his gesture or preparation was such a nature that he is about to use criminal force against other and thereby it causes apprehension in the minds of the victim that he is about to use criminal force against me for example we have illustration number b of section 351 which says a begins to unloose the muzzle of a ferocious dog so he begins to unloose the muzzle of the ferocious dog intending or knowing it to be likely that he may thereby cause z to believe that he is about to cause the dog to attack z so he unmuzzled the furious dog ferocious dog and he even intending or knowing it to be likely that that uh, he even causes to believe to the victim that he unmuzzled the ferocious dog just because so that the dog may attack over him and therefore he constituted or his act constituted an assault under section 351 of the indian penal code we have already uh, understood uh, the explanation that uh, mere words do not amount to an assault but if the words are accompanied with the gesture or preparation then it will amount to an assault because uh, the word giving some meaning to the gesture and preparation uh, for example if a uh, if someone who who is a child and if he says that the I, i will slap you then his word is not giving certain meaning and therefore it shall not constitute an assault under section 351 of ipc we may take another example suppose a person 
having lathi in his hand and he shouted over the policeman that he will break his head and the policeman insisted him for his thumb impression it may not amount to an assault but if the person who is without lathi said that if he will insist him then he will break his head thereby he went from there and he come with some other person along with lathi then it is a reasonable apprehension it may cause a reasonable apprehension in the minds of the policeman that he is about to use criminal force and therefore he would be guilty of the assault under section 351 similarly medical examination of the women without her consent constitute an assault under this section come to another important aspect of assault difference between assault and battery so in general assault includes assault and battery as well because the assault is a very wider term and thereby it includes assault and battery in fact both are separate offenses assault and battery both are the separate offenses but still it in, it includes both the term so it is a threat used by one to use criminal force against other whereas in case of battery actual apprehension of unlawful force however slight directly or indirectly here the battery includes every touching and laying hold on another person's cloth in angry revengeful manner in rude manner or in hostile manner so these all will constitute the offense of battery basically in english law we call criminal force the battery for example threat to throw boiling water on a man amount to an assault and when it touches the body then it will amount to the offense of battery or we can say the offense of criminal force come to another important aspect of uh, assault that is difference between assault and criminal force we have already studied that what we call uh, force under section 349 uh, the criminal force under section 350 and the assault under section 351 uh, in case of force if someone uh, making a motion change of motion or cessation of motion if that motion change of motion or cessation of motion has been done uh, with intention to annoy frighten or injure any other person then it will be converted into criminal force then what is the distinction between the assault and criminal force the difference between assault and criminal force under indian law is the same the difference between assault and criminal force under the indian law is the same as in english law between assault and battery what does it mean under the uh, under indian law we have assault and criminal force and under english law we have assault and battery otherwise there is no difference between the criminal force and battery touching another in anger spitting over the fo- uh, over the face of other that is less than hurt but more than assault we understood that uh, touching another in the anger or spitting on the face of other that is less than hurt but more than the assault and therefore that uh, amount to uh, criminal force so these may be the instances of criminal force but in english law it is battery so what we understood that the assault is something less than criminal force but more than mere words or mere preparation because it has certain meaning if it it has certain meaning then it shall amount to an offense of assault thank you very much